Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of my Project CLS 63 AMG series. So here is my W218 in completely stock form just after I first purchased it. A decent looking car I'm sure you'll agree. The W218 may not be as unique or groundbreaking as the original CLS, but it's still distinctive within its own right. Now the car's got a somewhat more masculine look than the original CLS, but I still feel that the rear of the car could look a little bit more aggressive. I've always liked the idea of fitting a proper rear diffuser, IDD carbon fibre, to achieve this look. So looking at the rear of the car, you can see that the stock diffuser, which Mercedes has fitted to the car, had some very minor panels, or fins I guess you could call them, but overall it's a fairly conservative look, which wasn't too aggressive. Here in England, and specifically in Europe, our laws dictate that all cars are required to have a rear fog light fitted. Now Mercedes fitted this in the dead centre of the diffuser, in what I personally think is a nice piece of design. And the rest of the world, such as in the States, didn't have a fog light fitted to the rear. So after some research on German and American forums, to see what other owners have been fitting to their cars, aftermarket options fall into two categories. First is a simple replacement to the stock version, except for it's made from carbon fibre, otherwise it looks identical. And the other type is the Rentec version, again made from carbon fibre, but this time with large vertical slats, or fins, giving the car a greater aggressive look, exactly what I'm after. A quick Google reveals that the Rentec version sells for around $5,000 on Rentec's own website, made from real carbon fibre. Unfortunately my budget doesn't spread that high, so off to eBay I go to see what other options are available. Very quickly, I see that there are a number of Chinese made Rentec style clones available for around £300. After hearing the odd horror story online about dodgy build quality from these Chinese suppliers, reluctantly I go ahead and order one. A week or so later, it arrived, which is not bad considering it said at least a minimum of one month for delivery on the advert. I was however stung for import duty, which added another £40 or so to the final amount. So the actual part in fact is very good quality. Now of course it's not real carbon fibre for this price, but it does feel very strong. And the advert also stated that it would have the cutout for the fog light for European models, which as you can see it hasn't. So this section I'm going to have to cut out with my Dremel. Now it's about time I started to remove the rear bumper. First up, you're going to have to work your way around the underside, undoing all the bolts. Now these are actually used to hold in the existing diffuser, keeping it in place so it doesn't move around. As these bolts are exposed to the elements, you may need to give them a spray of WD-40 if they don't budge. Then move around to inside the boot, removing first the plastic bolts holding the trim panel in place, which will expose the bolts holding the actual bumper on on the left and right hand side. Afterwards you'll be greeted with this peculiar bolt, something which I've never actually seen before. Now the nut is actually held in place on a metal rod which is around 10 centimetres long or so. The rod can be moved around inside the cavity but it's stuck right against the chassis and you can't remove it. Does anyone know the actual point of this? If you do please leave it in the comments below. Now this actually really perplexed me for a while. How on earth am I going to get this nut off the rod when I couldn't even unscrew it? It's stuck on the rod which is held against the chassis. A quick trip to my local hardware supplier offered me a solution. Now this spanner box allowed me to loosen the nut but one issue still remained. How was I going to expose the end of the rod? A hammer and screwdriver did the tip trick by exposing the end, allowing me to free the nut and remove the bumper. And here's the car without the rear bumper fitted. Now there's a good 8 years worth of road grime and crud on here which all needs cleaning off. Now whenever you have your car open and exposed like this, it's always good practice to give it a decent clean as you can access all the parts you never normally see. So one thing's instantly apparent, look at the state of the exhaust tips. 
Now these are supposed to have a mirror chrome finish. Which if I pan across to the right hand side, you can see just that. After a good half hour or so of elbow grease, they look much better now, don't they? And now another 30 minutes or so later, the left hand side is also fully cleaned up. As you can see, they're not perfect as the insides are still a bit patchy, but compared to how they were, they're looking far better. Tips are pretty much as good as they're ever going to be without me getting them done professionally. Now the next part to tackle is the rust. Yes, even this 2011 TLS has rust. Luckily, it's just on the slam panel and also on the mounting bracket behind but it's still not great for an eight year old car to have this. One day I'll actually own a Mercedes that has no rust at all. So anyway, I got a bit sidetracked there, back onto the bumper. Here it is off the car, and also here is the Eurospec rear fog light, which does fit snugly into the bumper. As this new diffuser won't have any mounting points or an actual hole for it, it's gonna be tricky to line it up and get it looking nice. Now next task I need to do is remove the existing diffuser. Looking around the bumper, you can clearly see that it's neatly clipped into place along the entire length of the bumper. And also these two mounting brackets, which are used to secure all this in place, are actually attached to a separate piece. Now I need to remove this, and I've got a feeling that these will need to be reduced down in size before the new diffuser will be able to fit. And just a quick clip showing you these tabs which I was referring to, once the diffuse is off the bumper. So back onto the car once again, here it is after I've fully cleaned it up and I've polished the exhaust tips as well as treated the rust patches. Now to treat the rust I use a chemical rust killer, I then sanded out the remaining rust black spots and then treated the patches with both zinc primer before adding paint and then eventually clear coat. Now all of these methods should keep the rust at bay for a good few years. So we're finally at the point where we can marry up the carbon diffuser to the bumper. Immediately I run into a problem. Unlike the original version, there are no clips or holes along the top of the diffuser, which I can use to permanently attach them both together. So without this gaffer tape in place, it simply pops out. Now this is going to be tricky. As a starting point, I decided to drill a couple of holes into the flat section at each corner of the diffuser, and then attach them both with some stainless steel bolts. Now this area is clearly designed for this as there's a flat section with just enough space to drill a hole. So with the screws in loosely, this at least gave me a starting point in which to hold them both in position. I next connected up the rest of the bumper and across the centre with many different cable ties, making sure that they're not visible from the exterior. Now, as long as it keeps them both attached securely, I can then use adhesive once they're on the bumper to hold it all um, perfectly together. Now, I'm really sorry, for some apparent reason, I didn't even bother to film any part of the cable ties holding them both in place. So, in its place, is some footage of me pointing at a bag of cable ties. And then the last piece of the dremeling I'm going to need to do is to trim off around 1cm per side of the central bracket. Otherwise it sits foul of the new carbon fins. So back out of the car, I've reattached the bumper with the diffuser attached. This would have been virtually impossible to do to keep them both together without the help from a friend. So this part is definitely a two man job. And also, as you can see here, although the diffuser is attached to the bumper, there's still around a 5mm gap visible. If I press against this, you can see the required final position. So what I intend on doing is to fill this gap with sealant running across the entire way along the diffuser. This will keep it snug and in place, and most importantly, safe. Now the adhesive which I'm going to use for this is called Sikaflex, as the EBT Plus which I get in the black colour. Now you've probably seen this in my other videos on the channel, I use this for all my exterior modifications. I use this because it's flexible, weatherproof, heat resistant and uh, it's generally, I've never had any problems with it whatsoever.
and here it is just after I went around the entire bumper with the sealant. Don't worry, I did go around it and remove all the excess so nothing's visible. At the bottom of each fin, there's a flat circular panel. Again, I use the sealant on this as well to make sure it's all secure. If in future the sealant does give up the ghost under here, as it's exposed to all the elements, I'll look into using some small screws to screw them into the undershield. Now it may be slightly unorthodox, but I discovered that by simply wedging in a number of old rattle cans, ended up being the perfect fit to support the weight of the diffuser while I left it to dry overnight. Now you see, those rattle cans are the perfect height for holding up the diffuser until it's dry. And another close up of the sealant before I wipe off the excess. And now heading over to the left hand side of the car. Now I did this a couple of nights ago before as a test. As you can see it's completely rock solid and won't be moving anywhere. So I'm going to leave all this to dry overnight before I even attempt to move the car, just to be on the safe side. And then one further look at the underside. It's not pretty by a long shot, but it's completely out of the sight to everyone. And again, if these on the underside don't hold, I'll consider looking into screwing them into place in future. Looking pretty damn good if I don't say so myself. Now one part which I'm going to admit I did mess up upon is the cutout section for the rear fog light. I guess due to the angles and complexity of the shape as well as the really bad poor access to it from behind I appear to have overstepped on one side and under on the other. As you can see it doesn't look great up close, but standing 2 meters or so away he can't see the issue. So my plan going forward is to make a copy of the fog light surround from the original diffuser and then 3D print a new surround to make it look OEM. I hope you enjoyed this episode of my Project CLS 63 AMG series. There are plenty more videos to come. So if you haven't already, make sure you click on that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss them, plus all the other new videos I have in the pipeline. Oh, and one more thing, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It helps the channel with YouTube's algorithms or something. As always, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, cheers.